Hey everyone, Neverchill Tech here and today I would like to show you how you can actually install the latest Atmosphere release as well as the Tinfoil Shop or Nintendo Switch running firmware version 17.0.1 and for this tutorial you will need to have a version 1 Nintendo Switch, so an unpatched Nintendo Switch which can be used uh, with the RCM exploit. So if you're unsure what it means, I will leave a link in the video description where you can check what type of Nintendo Switch you've got based on the serial number and if you've got a Switch that's released after 2019 or if it's a Switch OLED or a Switch Lite then this method won't work for you but I have a link in the video description for a guide for those Switches as well so be sure to check out that guide if you do not have a version 1 Nintendo Switch in this case I have a version 1 Nintendo Switch which is up to date it's right now completely stuck so it's running the latest firmware which I can actually show you as well so if you go to system settings, scroll down to system, you will see that it's on firmware version 17.0.1. Um, it does not have a micro SD card installed, it's unmodified. So if you update your switch to firmware version 17.0.1, you have the exact same setup as I have right now. So what you will need for this tutorial is actually a micro SD card of at least 64 gigs. I recommend 128, but at least 64. Um, a RCM jig or a paperclip and if you do not have something like this I do have links in the video description as well as links for payload injectors so using this method that I will show you you'll actually need to use your PC to power on your switch to the custom firmware whenever your battery dies and whenever you decide to shut down your switch and using a payload injector tool which also comes with this jig um, you do not know you do not need a PC so it's up to you Actually, if you just use sleep mode on your Switch, you don't need it. But if you think, well, I might run out of battery or I just want to have the peace of mind that I don't want that I don't have to use my PC, then this is a great solution. So be sure to check out the links in the video description. Um, first things first, we need to power off our Nintendo Switch and we need to set up some files on our PC. So over on our PC, we will need to head over to this GitHub page. And of course, I will leave all relevant links in the video description. Um, in this case, it actually includes HATS, so it's a HAX package and it stands for Hackety Atmosphere Tinfoil and Signature Patches. So it includes actually all files that we will need to run a custom firmware on a Nintendo Switch. So be sure to go to this release page, scroll down a bit and download this zip file and put that zip file on your desktop. Then to actually uh, push a payload to a Nintendo Switch, we will need something called Tagra RCM. So I'm, I'm using the portable version. You can also use the installer.msi. Doesn't really matter. Just make sure to, if you want to go ahead and download the portable version to extract its contents to your desktop. And then you should end up with something like this. So let me close out of this menu. So you will have the heads zip package. You have Tegra RCM. And if you open up the heads, heads, uh, heads zip package, you will also find this payload.bin file. So just drag and drop this file to your desktop, just copy it over, don't uh, cut it from here, it should still be inside the hats.zip file. And then we're actually good to go to plug in a micro SD card, so I've already done so. And you need to make sure to format it to FAT32. So I will do it again, just to be on the safe side. So if you have a larger micro SD card, then you may not have this FAT32 option right here. And then I recommend you to download the mini tool partition wizard utility. So just Google search mini tool partition and you should find it. And that tool should be able to format your micro SD card to FAT32. Then just use regular default cluster size and hit OK. And this will format a micro SD card. Then go back to Windows File Explorer, go to your SD card and then we actually want to open up the hats.zip file and drag and drop all these files onto the root of our micro SD card. So it's a little less than 400 megabytes. So this may take a few seconds. Um, and once this process is completed, I will come back to you. So now all files have been copied over to a micro SD card. Then you want to go ahead and unplug your micro SD card from your PC and plug the micro SD card into your Nintendo Switch. So just make sure to plug in the micro SD card. And as I wanted to say, uh, you want to grab your RCM jig. So in my case, it's right here. You can also use a paper clip, but it's not really recommended since it may damage your pins. So just grab an RCM jig if you don't have one already. And as I said, there are relevant links in the video description as well, if you don't have it. So you want to slide in the right Joy-Con rail 
like so. Then you want to press and hold the volume up button as well as the power button at the same time for like three to five seconds. Then you can remove the jig and plug your Nintendo Switch into your PC using a USB cable. And again, if you don't have a Type-C to Type-A cable, there's a link in the video description. So just plug in your Switch to your PC and then we want to head over to our PC again. So on your PC, you actually want to go ahead and open up the Tagvar RCM um, folder. And if it's not extracted yet, just make sure to extract the folder so it's no longer a zip file. Then open it up, go to the Tagvar RCM GUI right here. Go ahead and open it up. And then you want to locate the payload.bin file that we extracted from the hats.zip file earlier. So open up the bin file. And now you should see RCM OK right here, which indicates that our switch is in the recovery mode and that it is being recognized by our PC. If this is your first time modifying the switch, you may need to install the drivers from this menu. So you can go to settings and make sure to install the driver right here if you haven't done so already. Otherwise, if it still doesn't show up as RCM OK right here, you may need to uh, put your switch into the recovery mode again, plug it back into the PC and it should be recognized. So once it's being recognized, you can go ahead and just hit this inject payload button. And this should be your switch to the Hackety bootloader interface. And you can unplug your switch from your PC, set up the date and time, but it's not really that necessary. So go ahead, hit OK. Now the first thing you want to do is actually create a backup of your internal NAND storage. So what we will do is we will install the custom firmware onto our micro SD card. So it's completely separate from our internal storage. But if for whatever reason, or Nintendo Switch gets corrupted, the internal storage gets cor corrupted, then we have a backup solution. So first of all, we'll go to tools, go to backup eMMC, and make sure to hit the eMMC boot zero and boot one option. I already got a backup, so I will skip this step, but since it will be a complete backup of our internal storage, this process may take up to like one and a half hours, depending on the speed of your micro SD card, of course. Um, once this process has been completed, just go back, close out of this menu, and now we want to set up an MUMMC partition. So first of all, we will need to partition our micro SD card. So go to this partition SD card option, hit OK. Then you want to select at least 12 gigs for the MUMMC partition, or just go all the way to the right for a full partition. Doesn't really matter. I will set up a 12 gig partition hit next step, hit start, wait for a few seconds for the partition manager to start. And then I also need to press the power button once to continue. So now it will back up all files temporarily uh, that we've stored on a micro SD card for actually the atmosphere package, the hacker package, uh, the tinfoil shop and the signature patches. And then afterwards it will partition on micro SD card and then we can finally set up the MU MMC partition. So once the partition manager has finished its job, then I will come back to you. So now uh, it says state is done. So it has successfully partitioned on micro SD card. Then we can close out of this menu, go to home, go to MU MMC. Then we hit create MU MMC. So you can see it's still disabled right here. That's why we create, need to create one first. So we need to choose SD partition since we've already partitioned our micro SD card in a previous step. Hit SD partition, hit part one. And now it will create an MU MMC partition on our micro SD card. And what this basically means is that it will copy over all relevant files from our SysNAND to our micro SD card. So we can actually boot uh, based on those files to our custom firmware interface on our micro SD card. And after this process is done, I actually forgot to mention, but you can also make a backup of your NAND storage, which is stored on your micro SD card to your PC. So what you need to do is you can uh, eject the micro SD card from your PC or from your switch after this uh, process has been completed. And then you can transfer over the backup folder, which includes both the boot zero, boot one and raw eMMC partition. So in case something goes wrong on your Nintendo Switch when modifying it, you can always restore those files from within Hackety and boot to the official firmware. So we'll just need to give this uh, a hot minute. I think it's around two minutes for it to complete. Um, so once this is done, I will come back to you again. So now this process has been completed and we can exit out of this menu. And you will see that e, uh, the MU MMC option is now enabled right here. If it's still disabled for you, just go to change MU MMC, select SD raw one, hit okay. 
and now MUMMC should be enabled. So close over this menu and now we can actually boot to our custom firmware. So go to launch and select CFW MUMMC. Don't boot to the SysMMC because that will boot a switch to um, atmosphere on our internal storage and we actually don't want to do that. We want to boot to our external uh, SS, uh, SD card, sorry, not SSD, SD card. So just press that option and this will boot our switch to the uh, MUMMC partition that we've just created. And there we are. So we can unlock our Nintendo Switch and actually we can safely connect to the internet because both our serial number will be blurred out and we do have 90 DNS enabled. So what it means is that based on the hats package that we currently have installed, we actually don't communicate with the Nintendo servers. So it's fine to be connected to the internet and I can actually show it to you as well in a second. But first, let me show you that we are actually running a custom firmware. So I will go to system in here you can see we're running firmware version 17.0.1, Atmosphere 1.6.2, and the E stands for MUMMC. So we're running the custom firmware from our micro SD card. And now if I go to the album, it should bring us to the home view menu. And there we are. So the hats package also comes with some nice utilities. And if I go to the 90DNS testing utility, you can actually see that all Nintendo servers have been blocked. So that's good. I can hit B. And now if I go to the right, you will see the tinfoil installer. So just click on it and this will install tinfoil to our micro SD card and actually make it a title on our home screen as well. So give this a second here to boot and there we go. And there's tinfoil. So that's basically the tutorial. So now you've got tinfoil up and running as well as some other nice homebrew utilities. Um, and if you want to boot back to the official firmware, you can just shut down your internet switch. Um, I can actually show it to you. You can shut down your switch and just boot it up like you normally would. But then if you want to go back to um, your custom firmware, you will need the RCM jig again and push the Hackety payload. But for now, if you just power off your switch, boot it back up. It will boot a switch to the official firmware on our internal storage. And this way, if you've bought any games that you want to play online, you can use the uh, internal storage for that, connect to your Nintendo servers, and then you should be good to go. So this is our internal storage. If we go to system settings, scroll down to system, you can actually uh, see it here as well. So it's just the official firmware, 17.0.1. And now, as I said, if you want to go back to your custom firmware, you will need to power off your switch, put it into the recovery mode using the RCM jig again, and then you want to push the payload.bin file that you used earlier to boot to Hackety. And then you can select the custom firmware uh, MUMMC option again. And this will bring your switch back to your custom firmware on your micro SD card with the tinfoil application pre-installed right now. So yeah, that's basically the guide for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace out.